Welcome to the Sunshine Network with Jackie B. Sunshine Smith, the boxing diva, and you're watching the Sunshine Boxing Show, the TKO talk show because we only talk boxing. And today we're talking boxing in Orlando, Florida at the World Boxing Organization Convention, and we're talking to the president of the WBO, Paco Valcarcel. Did I pronounce that right? Perfect, baby. <laughs> and you're perfect. This is a perfect convention. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm learning so much here. I was just saying I went to the judging seminar to learn there. Tell us a little bit about the WBO and what it does. WBO is a boxing uh, uh, in, uh, entity. We run boxing all around the world. Uh, without any doubt, I can tell you that WBO is a very prestigious uh, organization well respected everywhere and we are just more than boxing if you see the logo we have this year in the convention yes. we we have boxing to fight fighting each other to champion fighting each other but we got also a, a lot of community work uh, social commitments okay. social work and we have our champion we use our champion as a role model for the kids Okay. And we, that's the way we are educated, educating the kids to be good citizens when they become professionals and, and, and mature. Oh, now that's different. That's different from a lot of other organizations where it's just the title and, and no other affiliation because you have standards for your champions, behavior inside and outside the ring. And they are commitment, you know. If you are, if you are a WBO champ, you have to to be uh, committed okay. to work with the kids, and you have to participate in any uh, social work that we do in your country or anywhere we call you, oh. or you have to work with the community, help the community. For example, we got in, you remember the big uh, hurricane in, in the Philippines? Yes, yes. Okay, after the hurricane, we. We have our people there, our champs, regional and, and world champion, Pike, I was there. Okay. And then we bought a lot of what, $20,000 in water and baby food. Oh. And we were in the community with all our uh, fighters, you know, champions, regional champions, yes. you know, helping the community. That's the, the, the social commitment I engage, you know, that we, we want to promote with our champions. Okay, now tell me, how did you get involved with the WBO? Were you a boxer in your day? No, never. I, 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 when I grew up, I, I grew up in a tough neighborhood. Ah. Then you have to fight. <laughs> in a tough you have to fight. But I, uh, I remember I was in public school in Puerto Rico. Um, I, in Puerto Rico, everybody is a boxing fan. You okay. know, since you are a kid, you are watching fights. Hector Macho, uh, you, Camacho. No, we have 51 champions. All I around, know, you know, but he was my and favorite. We, and, and remember, <laughs> he was my friend too. And he was the first WBO oh. Latino champion, oh, wow. Puerto Rican okay. champion. Okay. Okay. Then uh, you are a boxing fan. You are there. I was in public school. Later, I had the opportunity to be in college and then in a law school. Okay. Then I was, you know, uh, as, a, uh, as a lawyer, was very good. Then I, <laughs> I, w I got involved with Wilfredo Gomez, the best Puerto Rican champion ever. Okay. He was. He made 16 defenses, 17 defenses, either by KO, 122, 126, 130. Okay. Uh, then I was his lawyer. I was uh, negotiating his fight. After that. I was um, I was commissioner in Puerto Rico for two or three years. After that, I became WBO president in 1994, 95. Oh, now the WBO is in so many places, but rapidly expanding in China and uh, in India. Now uh, we're going to work in India the same way yeah, we start in, in China. Yeah, okay. So that is tremendous. I mean, you're you're really growing and. And what do you think about what's the future of the WBO? The sky's the limit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the sky's the limit. You know, we are working hard. No, no, we are, we have, you know, we, in between India and, and China, okay. we have 1.3, 1.2 billion. That's 2 billion point five, you know, something like that. Yeah. We are talking about more than half of the world in population. Wow. And then we are working on, on that uh, countries uh, with the five we are developing. You know, in, in China, it's more difficult because the system. But they are, now they are 
accepting the, the, the professional boxing. In India, they don't have the tradition, but we're going to be there. We have planned for five years, ten years, like we did in China. We started in China eight years ago. Oh, okay. And now we have So Chi Minh, all the fighters, the big names. And uh, we're going to work with that. Also, we're still working in other communities or other countries. For example, we have a big uh, two or three uh, shows in Afghanistan. Oh, wow. And we got a guy from Afghanistan who fought an intercontinental titan. Wow. And I was never a, imagined yeah. that. Yeah. And I, they, they, I wasn't there. I sent a, 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 my friend from from uh, Germany to be the supervisor of the fight. The President Karzai was there. Then you got everybody who was there all around the, the army. And you have a huge crowd oh, wow. watching that fight there. And they got the war. You remember they got the war. But they, then this kid who's from... From Afghanistan, he said, instead of rifles, let's use our fists, you know, okay. for peace. Fists okay. for peace. Fists yeah. for peace. Oh, wow. so, something like that, you know. Yeah. That's something we are doing all around the world. Plus the, you know, regular boxing uh, matches where we supervise all around the world. And you have a lot of high-profile champions also. Oh, <laughs> the best, baby. The best. Simply the best. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you for taking time to talk with Sunshine Boxing about that to the Atlanta audience in the world because we're on the Internet as well as television in Atlanta. And it was it's very hard getting a hold of you. Everybody wants a piece of Paco. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a privilege to be with you, babe. And, uh, you know, it's a nice show. You are, one, you know, you know boxing. Of course yeah, you know boxing. Yeah. You are one of the most uh, charismatic, uh, ladies in boxing. Thank you. Congratulations very much. on your and hello to your fans. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the Sunshine Boxing Show. Look forward to another wonderful year with the WBO and the expansions. And I'm just learning so much. I was telling your Vice President Leon, I said, "Oh, I'm learning so much. It's it's amazing the, the education that you give to your people, and it's available to everyone." Because there I was in the judging classes as a the promoter still learning. But I want to learn what the referee does. And, and I think it makes us more knowledgeable. And uh, it's just a great opportunity. Just I'm so happy that I'm here. But if you like it, next year we're going to be in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And baby, in winter. <laughs> you oh. can be in the beach when the, you know, probably you're going to have, uh, you know, 40 degrees in, in Atlanta, uh -huh. but you're going to have 85 degrees in Puerto Rico. Okay, I'm looking forward to okay. it. Okay. Thank you so much for being on the Sunshine Take Boxing care. Show. We love you. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Sunshine Smith, the boxing diva. And you're watching the Sunshine Boxing Show, the TKO talk show, because we only talk boxing. And today we're talking boxing at the World Boxing Organization Convention in Orlando, Florida. And we're talking to Melvina Latham. How you doing? I am just wonderful, Jackie. This is awesome. And then you're an incredible woman, so <laughs> <laughs> it's just wonderful. Oh, you're a legendary boxing judge. You've been at it a long time. You could, could have been teaching that seminar yesterday. <laughs> yes, well, you know what? I finally had a chance to sit down and relax and watch the proceedings and not be the one giving the proceedings, giving this, uh, this seminar for a change. So it was, it was novel for me. I actually sat through the whole thing and now, said nothing. Now, you, you've, you've judged title fights, heavyweight title fights, I, be, I believe, right? Yes. Uh, tell us about that experience and the pressure is on. You really have to be an experienced uh, judge to do that. Yes, I kind of think you better be a little <laughs> bit experienced, uh, you know. But but every I think every judge, everyone goes through um, the, the the pressure process when you're when you're expected to do something because not everybody's going to agree with you or not everybody's going to think you're doing the right thing. But if you know in your heart what you're doing and you understand the rules and you know what you're looking at, uh, then you're you're way ahead of the game. I learned a lot just being there for a while, and of course I did something wrong, and, and he called me out in the room, and I was like, oh, God, I'm so embarrassed. I said, better get out of here. <laughs> you know what? I applaud you. You know why? Because I have never seen a promoter uh, or commentators or, or, or any of uh, the above at any seminars and I've given wow. I've given a lot of seminars and I've been to more seminars than I can imagine but I've never seen wow. anyone else there but the judges 
So, so your being there actually meant a lot because this is giving you an opportunity to understand what our criteria is. Yes, because I had no idea about the scoring zone, the, the navel ahead and all, and I see them hitting on the arms, and, and now the punch stat statistics. I mean, they should throw that out the window. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> well, well, now you have an opportunity to see how, what the, how the end result happens, what happens at the end of the fight, why the scores are what they are, because we have criteria. We have places that we can, punches that we can count, and there are punches that we don't count. So you have the first opportunity to see what we learn and what we do and how we apply those rules to our sport. It was very educational. And, of course, that's why I came to the convention to learn. And I have learned so much. And I'm just ecstatic. It's my first WBO convention. But it won't definitely won't be my last. Uh, now, how did you get involved in boxing? I think that's a long, <laughs> long story. It happened a long time ago, many years, and and I, I I have to tell I have to tell on my husband. He he actually created me. Okay, um, he sort of put me in the position to be a judge when I didn't really want to, but I used to go. I was involved with the amateurs for almost four or five years, and uh, I was I used to follow him to all the amateur shows and. Uh, you know, I think one thing led to another. I ended up the referee doesn't show up or a timekeeper doesn't show up, and you're it. Uh, and and it's been a, it's been a long process, but it's wonderful. Now, tell us about your husband, the fight doctor. <laughs> you want to know about the fight doctor or my husband? Okay, okay. <laughs> the fight doctor. <laughs> who happens to be married to the to boxing judge. <laughs> He's amazing. He's an amazing person. He's an amazing, uh, uh, he's an amazing physician. He is uh, caring. He is all for the boxers. If you're talking about a boxing or a, a sports medicine physician, he um, instituted some of the first real rules uh, involving um, uh, HIV testing in New York State uh, and uh, he's 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 been on he's been working it for a long time so because he's what been the medical director with several sanctioning bodies yes that's correct <laughs> uh, he he uh, recently stepped down uh, as medical director with the IBF he is currently the medical advisor for the WBO uh, and he was at one point the medical director for the New York State Athletic Commission Wow. So he's, and, and while he was there, he instituted all of the new rulings as far as HIV, and, um, and he's, 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 uh, he's done an amazing job for boxers. Yes, he has. I'm proud of him. Both of you are just legendary in boxing, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> As the WO theme said, uh, box, not just boxing. You guys are not just boxing. You're just a great couple for boxing. And it's been an honor to interview you here on the Sunshine Boxing Show. Look forward to seeing you at another convention. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you, too. And you are an amazing <laughs> woman. And I think that what you're doing for boxing is, is amazing. And that you're taking, you're taking it one step beyond. Which, which, which most, you know, I think most people in boxing, in our boxing community, which is very small, could really appreciate. Oh, well, thank, so, you so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And thank you for being on the Sunshine Boxing Show again. It's been a pleasure. This is Jackie right. Sunshine Smith, the boxing diva. And you're watching the Sunshine Boxing Show, the TKO talk show, because we only talk boxing. And today we're talking boxing in Orlando, Florida, at the WBO convention, the World Boxing Organization convention. I'm here with Eames A.C. Moses. A.C. is for the African Connection, here all the way from Namibia for the World Boxing Organization convention. How you doing, A.C.? I'm doing very good and I'm happy to be here in, in Orlando, Florida. So this looks like a family, it's a t city of boxing. Good. I've heard so much about boxing over in Namibia. You guys are really active over there, have quite a few champions. So what is your record? Uh, me, myself, I'm a boxing trainer and I'm in a matchmaker of the MTC Nesta Sunshine Boxing, uh, which is down over there in Namibia. And we produce a couple of number of champions. Where Namibia, we had a WBO, the first world champion from Namibia was in WBO 
uh, junior middleweight, uh, known with uh, Harry the Terminator Simon. He was promoted by uh, Frank Warren. So, okay. And then uh, our second world champion was a WBA champion, lightweight, who was promoted by the Don King production. And he got his title in Japan when he beat uh, Kobori Yusuke from Japan in his hometown. And uh, right now, we, and then our third world champion was a bantamweight who in Polos Ambunda, The Rock. He's a bantamweight WBO world champion. And uh, he made me to meet Mr. Paco in Cebu, Philippines. That was 2014. So, and now he's a current IBO super bantamweight world champion right now. And we have a couple of number of WBO fighters in the world rating, like Julius Indongo. He's rated number eight in the junior world weight. So he's a WBO Africa champion. And we have a couple of our youngsters that are coming up there. And that's why I came to the WBO convention, just to know more about boxing and how we're going to push them and make them world champion in the future. Hey, well, you know what? That's why I'm here to learn also. And I've learned a lot. I've, I'm really taking it all in. I'm looking forward to, to being a part of the WBO. And so it's a, it's a great convention. We're wrapping up tonight. Tell us, uh, Namibia now, you guys, because you have so many fighters, you're so active, are uh, most of the fights in Namibia, or do you find some of your fighters going out of the country to fight? How about, do you guys ever go over to South Africa to fight? Yeah, we fight all over the world. Like, we had a couple of three fights. We got a guy in the super middleweight, Will Before the Black Mamba, who just gave a great performance when he fought the current WBO Super Middleweight Champion, known by the name King Arthur Abraham from Germany. So we gave him a very good fight. It was a close fight, even though he got the decision. And after that fight, he became a world champion and he defended his world title like six executive time. Like if we have a rematch with Lobe Stiglitz, which was fight of the year in Germany. So we had another guy in the cruiserweight, the Vikapita Beast Master Meroro. He just had a fight in Russia, Moscow, where he fought a guy from Russia, Kudryavich, uh, and Andrew Kudryavich, a hard-hitting Russian. So we have a couple of good fighters, and we have fight, fight uh, right now, like now in the next few months, like on the 28th, we're going to go over to South Africa. Paulus Moss is going to fight... Uh, Malcolm Klassen for the IBO International, and then we're going to have another fight with Capita Mero for the WB Pan Africa Cruiserweight with Tabis on Chunu. We got a couple of fights coming up, like and like I said, my reason to come here is just to come learn more. And uh, because I'm a trainer, of course, I work with all the boxers and I work with Nesta Sunshine hand in hand on, on a daily basis just to make boxing the number one sport in Africa. Now, you just, before, prior to coming here to Orlando, you were over in Las Vegas uh, with Floyd Mayweather Sr. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was a, a dream come true, man. Then they always say, if you want to be the best, you must learn from the best. And then my first day when I came at the Mayweather Boxing Club, everybody welcomed me very well, you know. So I was more like a brother because the first thing for me was a senior said to me, say, hey, man, you look my, like my son, man. You might be my lost <laughs> son in Africa. Hey, my brother from the, 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 the motherland. Then he said, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a name. From today on, you're going to be the AC. That's mean African connection. That's actually where I got my... My name and and, oh, and so Floyd Senior gave you the yeah, Floyd Senior gave, gave you the name, the name. <laughs> and, and and once I put that name like on Facebook and I tell the people where I get the name from, it's a big name. It's more like a brand, you know. Everybody <laughs> can't wait to see me back in my country. So I've been with Floyd Mayweather Senior in the gym. So I was asking him everything about the secret of boxing, how to work with upcoming fighter, how to work when you're preparing for a mega fight. So he told me so many things. He teach me a lot of stuff and you know I brought some videos how I train my guys at home and I compare with him and then he said okay you're gonna be a great trainer and that was a smart move for you as, as young as you are to come from Africa on your own expenses wow. to come over to Las Vegas and this city is very expensive and I know you put a lot of hard work and dedication that's why you're here today so that was a great honor to talk to him that was a great honor to work with the Mayweather team that was a great thing also not only for me it's for boxing back home because the knowledge that I pick up there, I'm going to use it and give it back to my people back home. So, and also he promised me that back in maybe in the future, next year, I'm going to bring him over to Africa. Oh. Then we're going to have oh. some boxing clinic and all that. So that's going to really be good and to, to boost boxing and to bring everybody from their comfort zone to come and support boxing because, you know, when we talk about the Mayweather family, of course, they are the best in the world. There's no doubt about it. They are the highest paid athlete. They change boxing. Boxers being yeah. paid very well. 
now because of Mayweather, if we have to tell the truth, and I really experienced a lot from them, and I was not expecting them to be like that. Like what we see in the social media, they are really great people. They treated me like a brother, like a son, you see, like, so I, I'm, I'm going to back, come back to Las Vegas, so that's going to be my home every time when I'm in the USA. Wow. Wow, that was just a great experience for you and for the fighters, for you to take the knowledge back to them and the fact that they want to come over to Namibia to do a boxing clinic. And, and this was just a good thing because coming to a convention, if we can have to talk about WBO, I have looked at WBO is one of the very professional organizations. They give opportunity to everybody who deserve it and they really don't uh, look at colors of a person or where you from, if you guys, if you have a good fighters. Yeah. I have seen them really reach title from great fighters because of certain points, certain things that they have been reached. If the guy didn't fight maybe for two years, of course, he can't be a champion. WBO never take chances to that. They're going to take the title away and give it to somebody who can fight and who's been active. So that's one thing I love about WBO. They really, it's a very professional organization and with uh, in the leadership of Mr. Paco and his executive. Yeah. And I also want to thank a guy like Dion, I mean Leon uh, from uh, the representative of Asia, specific WBO Africa yeah. and Europe and WBO International. He's doing a great job. You see, it's because of him. That's why we, we're trying to come over here. And if you see, I was the only one from Africa representing Africa at this convention. I haven't wow. met anyone from there yet. So, of course, the South African people, Africa in general, they would love to see me and to hear what was happening at the WBO convention. And now I become more like I'm the representative of Africa for WBO. So everybody's posting <laughs> me. The media is all over from my country. They want to know what is going on down here. Oh, so wow. it's a very good experience. And uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to share whatever I learn here with my people because we have to make boxing the number one sport. And everybody loves boxing. It's a very beautiful game. Once you come in, you will never want to walk away. <laughs> and your, uh, the, your promoter there, Nesta Sunshine Tobias, isn't his company called Sunshine Boxing or is it Nesta Sun? How, what's the name of that company? Uh, the name is the MTC Sunshine Boxing Academy. Yes, because every now and then people get us confused because my company name is Sunshine Boxing. So they'll be like, oh, so and so and so. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Then I realize that they mean Sunshine Boxing Academy. Yeah, because, you know, he's, that's was his stage name because he's a former boxer. He's a former fighter. So that was his name. Oh, his it's, name was, he was Sunshine also? Was Sunshine also, yeah. That's why he got the name from him. That's why he named the Academy. All right. Oh, there's something interesting about me. If you look at me, I never fight in my life, you know. Oh, my my oh, elder, really? Yeah, okay. I've been, but I've grown up in a boxing family. Like my elder brother, like I said, he's a former world champion. I've been going to the gym with him when we were young. Okay. I've been trying because my parents didn't want us all to get into boxing, but I was always dodging then. That's why I ended up becoming a coach. And I've been a coach for the amateurs. I represent our country, coaching the amateurs, the under-20s, their senior team. I was at the in Australia for the Commonwealth Games. I was in Beijing coaching the national team for the Olympics. And I prepare the fighters, like every time they go for, for Olympic Games, they have to come down to me, then we prepare them, and then they send them with someone else because now I'm more involved in the professional boxing. So I give opportunity to the other guys, but we help because amateurs, you can help prepare them, and then you can send them with somebody else. Oh, well, all right. Well, I want to thank you for being on the Sunshine Boxing Show. It's uh, <laughs> a little busy around here this afternoon as we prepare for the dinner at 7 p.m. But it's it's been great running into you. I can't believe I actually met someone from Nes 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 Nestor Tobias Sunshine Boxing in Namibia. And it's uh, I'm so great. Hopefully one day I'll get over there to see one of you guys fight. So I've been trying to get to Namibia, but I haven't made it yet. But yeah, no. You are home, man. You are in the motherland. You know? <laughs> so we're probably going to work together as you guys have another promotion here. So, of course, we can try to see how we can put, okay. connect America and Africa together, you know. And the, or through boxing, everything is possible, you know, because sport is actually something there to unite people, you see. Great. But thank you for being on the Sunshine Boxing Show. Thank you. <laughs> Sunshine Smith, the boxing diva. And you're watching the Sunshine Boxing Show, the TKO Talk Show, because we only talk boxing. And today we're talking boxing at the World Boxing Organization Convention in Orlando, Florida. 
And I have with me Cole Marge Harris with the Lansing Spartan Youth Organization. How you doing, Cole Marge? Doing okay. Great. Now, what brings you here to the WBO convention? I came down to the WBO convention to submit my information about what I'm doing back home in the community in Lansing, Michigan. And what are you doing back home in the community in Lansing, Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I work with anti-bullying, child obesity, education, and drug-free for the youth. That's what I do back home. Okay, now, is the Lansing Spartan Youth Organization a boxing club? It's, uh, um, I use the boxing because I used to be a boxer, so the boxing saved me. So I just find child obesity, anti-bullying, and education back home. With boxing classes? With boxing classes, fitness classes, meeting other type of um, athletes to help better our youth. Okay, and how long has the organization been established there? Um, I started at the Lansing Spartans in 2010, and I got my 501c3 two years ago. Okay, so now what are you seeking from the WBO to assist with your organization? Um, the WBO to come down to Lansing, bring some of the fighters, the mentors to come and talk to some of the kids okay. and um, to support, try to, um, work, try to network with the WBO, what I'm doing back home. Because from my understanding, the, WBO, the WBO does, that's World Boxing Organization, as you can see here, does a lot in the community with their champions, more than just boxing. That's what the theme is this year. And it speaks to the fact that their champions go out into the community and must represent the WBO with their charitable work and, and things along that line. So I, I get it. I see what you're saying there. So, as a boxer, did you fight amateur or pro? I did both. Oh, okay. So, you understand. Are you the one that's coaching the kids in the gym? I'm coaching them. Then I'm working with some guys right now. One guy named is Tommy Washington Jr. And a couple other guys I'm working with right now. And I'm telling them, I'm showing them that don't make the mistakes I made. As the money was there and I took the money, okay. got, got caught up in the whole boxing industry with the money and traveling and having the wrong negative people around me. And I wasn't listening to my coaches and my trainers who really can help me and put me to that level where I should be at right now. Oh, okay. Well, that is so good that you're doing it. How many people involved in your organization? You have quite a huge group of people or you just, you say you've been around what, since 2010? So that's quite a bit of long uh, time to be working in the community. Do you have a lot of support in the Lansing area? Yes, I got like Joe Ferguson. I got some, the Monopoly, I call them the Monopoly crew. <laughs> I call them the, the people, they're behind me, so they support me a lot, like um, Joe Ferguson Development, um, Doug John, my job, Spiral Nightclub, um, Grangers, and a lot of other people back home. Hey, well, thank you so much for being on the Sunshine Boxing Show. Uh, does you does your organization have a website? Yes, it's lsyo.org. Good. Well, I look forward to hearing lots of things coming from your organization. Wish you much success and enjoy the rest of your time here at the WBO convention.